Hello, everyone. My name is Emily Walter, and I'm the regional manager for you at Monash University. It's really nice to welcome you all today. I'm just going to make sure that you can see my full screen. We will cover things from the university, but we'll also cover um, accommodation and studying and living here in Melbourne as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we'll start with an overview of the university to start off with. So it is only a younger university. So it was established in 1958 and we only had about 350 students at the start, but we're now actually Australia's largest university, which is of course something we're very proud of. So that breaks down, we have about 83,500 students who study with us. And the breakdown is about 54,000 undergraduate or bachelor degree students and 24,000 graduate or master degree students. Uh, we have four major ca campuses here in the city of Melbourne in Victoria where we're based. And we're a member of the GO8 group, group of eight group here in Australia, which I'm sure that you are familiar with. Uh, we are a truly global university, as we like to say. So we have campuses overseas in Malaysia, Indonesia, India, China, and Italy. So some students actually have the opportunity within their degree to study part of their degree at a Monash campus overseas. And then we also have over 115 teaching partners amongst 30 different countries. So something that I really like about Monash is how international we are in the fact that we have a lot of international students, but we always give you the opportunity to do either an exchange program in another country or sometimes even part of your internship or work integrated learning in another country as well. So that's something that I really like about the university. As far as the rankings, we are in the top 1% and the top 100 in the world. And this slide here are some, these are some of really the main differences and why you might choose Monash when you have so many universities to choose from and a few different countries that you're potentially looking at as well. So as I mentioned before, we have that global presence with our teaching partners overseas and our university campuses overseas. And we also have a really good reputation as well, which I'm sure that um, you are familiar with. We have three year accredited courses. So unlike studying in the US, for example, you jump right into your degree here at Monash. You don't have to do a year of general classes. You can start right away from your first year with the degree and the content that you're really interested in. So that even includes our medicine and our health science programs. You don't have to do a pre-med program, you go right into the degree. So an average bachelor degree is just three years for us. We also have a really big range of double degrees, which is something that we do specialize in. So a double degree is where you're actually studying two different bachelor degrees at the same time. And you can finish that in an average of just four years some of them are five years, if one of them is what we consider an honors degree. So that's obviously a really great way to set yourself apart from other graduates, but it's a really good way to integrate two different program areas that you're interested in as well. All of our programs will have work integrated learning, which is much like an internship, and that is something that will be set up by Monash. So you're basically working out in the field and we make sure that you're really applying the learning that you've taken from the classroom and applying it in the workplace. We have wonderful student support services with our group who we call Monash Connect. So regardless of whether you're an international student or an Australian student, you'll be well looked after by our support team. And then the student experience as well. So something that's a little bit different about Monash and something that I'll show you in a little bit when I show you our campuses is that we're not based right in the city of Melbourne. We're out in the suburbs, about 20 to 30 minutes in the suburbs, depending on which campus you study. At, um, but that also means that our students aren't just coming in and out for class like they might be if you were studying in the middle of the city. So we really have a lot of students who stay on campus to really uh, study with other students or to participate in one of the um, over 100 clubs and societies that we have to offer as well as all the different free on campus experiences as well. Okay, so, so those are some of the major points that I like to make about Monash and why you might look at choosing this university over others. Here are a few of the rankings. So you can really understand kind of where we stand as far as um, the QS rankings in the world. So overall, we're number 55 in the world as a university for 2021. We're number 59 in the world for employability. So that's based on uh, students who find jobs within six months of graduating at a full-time rate. Melbourne is ranked number three best city in the world for students. 
uh, the university is number one for education as well as engineering and technology. So a lot of our programs here at Monash are in the top 100 in the world. Um, our business faculty, for example, is Monash Business School is the largest business school in the, in the um, country, but we also have a lot of programs that are in the top 30 in the world. Okay, so let's go into the Monash location so you can actually see where we are. So most of the students here today would be at one of two major campuses that we have. So as I said before, there's really four major campuses here in Melbourne. One of these little um, dots that you see is for our law chambers or our law facility that we do have. So let me show you the two main campuses that you would most likely be based at. So the first would be the Caulfield campus just here. So it's about 20 minutes from the main bit of Melbourne or the CBD as we call it, which is Central Business District. So as I said, it's about 20 minutes um, from that main part of the city and you can get to the Caulfield campus really easily by train as well, which is really convenient. So a lot of the students will be living either at the Clayton campus or they might live in the city or in a house or apartment around the Caulfield campus and they can just take the train right to Caulfield. So this is where more of our fine art design and architecture students would be as well as some of our business students. So there's about 19,000 students who study at the Caulfield campus with 1,000 academics. And there's restaurants, there's some activities on campus. There's also a really nice gym as well. So this campus is a little bit easier to get around. There aren't quite as many buildings at the Caulfield campus. So it does feel like it's quite easy to get around the campus. Um, and a brand new beautiful library as well. We do have a free shuttle that goes in between the campuses, which is really important because you will find that a lot of our activities um, actually do happen at the, Col or, sorry, the Clayton campus. And this just means that you could take a 10 minute shuttle over to that campus if you ever need to get over there and you can enjoy uh, what's going on at either campus as well. Okay, so now I'll show you the Clayton campus, which is our major campus. Um, and this is where most of our undergraduate students would be based. So Clayton is home to 38,000 students. So it is quite a large campus with 8,000 academic staff. I always have students ask me if it's such a big campus, how many students am I gonna be sitting in the classroom with? Um, our average class size for students is just 28 to 33 students um, per one academic staff. So really small class sizes still or moderately small class sizes. You can expect though that in your first year or in some of those more major classes that a lot of students will need to take. Uh, the lecture style classes could be um, what you'll be taking and those can have anywhere from 180 to 250 students, but usually you will be in that smaller classroom setting. Okay, so the Clayton campus is where we have a lot more of our activities as well. Uh, we also have basically anything that you need and you could expect for major campus. So. We have a cinema, we have restaurants and bars, a post office, um, a chemist, medical services, a hair salon, and a supermarket all on campus. It actually, this campus has its very own postcode. So it's kind of like we built our own mini, mini city of a campus in Clayton. And Clayton is a little bit more of a suburb. So you should expect that if you do decide to study with us at Monash, that you will be based in a suburb if you're studying at the Clayton campus. But as I just mentioned, we've kind of built our own little city with so many activities going on on campus that a lot of students actually really appreciate that kind of a style or that kind of a setting. We also have a really nice brand new gym and pool and huge sporting facilities at the Clayton campus as well. Okay, so that gives you a really good idea of the campuses that you might be studying at. We're gonna go a little bit into Melbourne now and where you will be studying. So this is more of the city. Okay, so you can see on the screen, a really nice shot of Melbourne um, and the river that goes right through Melbourne. So as I mentioned before, we're the third ranked best city in the world for students as of 2019. We're also one of the world's most livable cities. And that's based on all the factors that you can see here on the right side. So this is gonna go a little bit into the features of Melbourne. So I always tell students, it's really important you understand the location of where you're studying. So not only the city where you're studying, but also where your campus will be based in the city. So now that you can understand that, you can also recognize that Melbourne City, um, you're really going to be you know, studying somewhere that there's a lot of di diversity, but there's also a lot of events and festivals, lots going on in the city. I like to tell everyone there's really something for everyone. 
every weekend I can find something brand new to do, which I love about Melbourne. I'm really into sports, so I love that we have the Australian Open every year. We also host the F1 Grand Prix. We have Australian football rules here, or AFL, which you can see on the bottom left, and cricket games. So just so many sports. We're unofficially considered the sports capital of the world, which I didn't know until I moved here. Uh, we also have a lot of nature as well. So we're not far from the beaches. You can see the Great Ocean Road on the right side here and Brighton Beach as well in the middle. We're also really known for our arts and um, our cafe culture as well. And actually almost 37% of Melbourne residents were born overseas. So, you know, when you're walking down the street or just in general, you really feel like you are at home because there's people from a ton of different countries who live here. It says people, uh, Melbourne is home to people from approximately 200 countries. And we also have 2.5 million international visitors every year. And this is just a good slide to talk a little bit about the food. Um, we have cuisines from all over the world and we're also known for our delicious coffee as well here in Melbourne. Now, a lot of our students do not choose to get a car when they move here to Monash or to Melbourne. They actually are able to just take public transportation because it's a really easy city to get around. Um, so we use something that's called the My Key Card. And I actually find that it's very affordable to take public transportation as well uh, throughout Melbourne. So it can get you all the way from the International Airport um, all the way to campus. And as I mentioned before, um, being ranked one of the top cities, safest cities in the world for students and one of the top uh, cities in the world for students to study, that is based on a few different factors, but those include personal safety, health safety, digital security and infrastructure. So it's really important to know where you're studying is going to be a safe place to study and you can consider Monash very or Melbourne, sorry, a very safe place to study. Okay, so we are going to go, I think we'll, let's go into student life at Monash because I'll wait until the end to answer some more of those program specific questions that you might have. I did want to show you the different accommodation options. So different housing options that you can choose from here at Monash. So you can choose to live either on or off campus as a Monash student. It doesn't matter um, how long you want to stay on campus or what age you are, there's really no limit um, as far as that goes. Or if you're doing a postgraduate degree or an undergraduate degree, any student can choose to stay on campus with us. So let's go into one of the units that we have on campus, which is one of our studio apartments. So what I always tell students is that it's really important, you know, you always will have a private bedroom if you do choose to live on campus at Monash. And it is quite an affordable option, actually, at, when you compare it to rentals um, in the area, just depending on how many people you choose to rent out with, of course. Um, but it can be comparable to renting out a unit or an apartment or sometimes even cheaper. Obviously, it's really convenient. You have everything that you need on campus, especially if you live at the Clayton campus. And it's a really great way to get to know other students and to really feel um, involved with the other students, but also with the campus activities. It's a really great way to integrate to living in a new country as well, because obviously that transition can be a little bit of a challenge, especially at first. So I do find if you live on campus, um, it's really easy to kind of integrate into, you know, and find a new friend group, for example. So you can apply for on-campus accommodation even before you have an offer with us. And it is first come first serve. So please, if you're thinking about living on campus, please just make sure you apply early because our places do fill up and we don't want you to be disappointed if we don't have any more apartments left at the end. The other option would be to live off campus. So there's a few different options for you there. Um, you can choose to live right in the middle of the city. Of course, you can choose to rent out an apartment by yourself or with friends, but you can also work with um, our partner provider called Urbanest, and Urbanest helps uh, students find accommodation within the city. So they actually have a group of accommodation providers that they work with. So that's a really good option if you are wanting to live in the city of Melbourne. Excuse me, and I also have a lot of students who say, especially um, one of my major uh, alumni students that I work with, um, he said that he actually lived really close to the Clayton campus because it is a little bit more affordable to live in Clayton, which is something else that I really like about being out in the suburbs, is that the housing can be more affordable. So you do have a few different options there. I'm just going to click on cost of living. Now, <laughs> the 
I kind of hesitate to show this slide sometimes. One, because this is such a huge range of different prices that you might be looking at. But two, I think that it is a little bit um, of an excessive amount that you might spend each week when you're looking at things like um, groceries and eating out. I would say almost nobody would spend $280 a week on groceries and eating out. But these fees or these costs, I guess, are all in Australian dollars. So please keep that in mind but it is just giving you a good range of where students might, might be spending or whereabout they might be spending that money. Um, and I think some of these figures are actually pulled off of the government website. So it's just giving you a fair idea of what they say students might, might pay. So you can see here that the on-campus studio and residential villages can range from um, $90 to $280 a week. I would say um, more at the higher range than the lower range. But if you did want to stay um, off campus, just depending on how many students you live with, or if you choose to live alone, um, this figure could, could be accurate. But it, there's so many different factors here, basically, that it really depends on, yeah, on what you decide to do in that area. Um, let me see what else I can cover before we go into some questions from you. I suppose student student life and campus life. So I mentioned before a little bit about the student experience. So we do have a really wide range of activities and services at Monash. Um, we have something called Amigo, which is an app. It's kind of like a social networking app specifically for the students that come to Monash. I mentioned our gym and pool facilities at the campus before. So this is Monash Sport. So this is our really nice gym. I wish we had a photo of our pool because it's a brand new, really nice pool as well. Sorry if you can hear some noise in the background. We have over 100 social clubs and academic clubs. So those include everything from music to culture to reading clubs, Harry Potter clubs. Kind of, if you think, if you think of one area that you're interested in, we most likely have a club or society for you. We have peer assisted study sessions um, and peer mentoring where you're actually working with other students, which is a really great way to be connected and to get some additional support. We have a Monash Student Association as well as a Monash International Student Association. So basically those are groups of students who are working um, and advocating for students that come to Monash. A huge range of health and well-being services and as an international student you will be getting overseas health cover as well. So that's something that's important that you know that a lot of your health actually almost all of any health uh, requirements or any um, yeah, a lot of your hospital visits and stuff like that will be covered under your um, student health insurance or, or a large percentage of it will be covered. 